Hey there, glad to see you. Hope your Aunt Patty has recovered from her recent bout of athlete's foot. If you missed it, catch up on our licensing series by watching the video of the best bikes for A1 riders. This video is for once you have leveled up. You've attained greatness, you're finally at least 19 years old, have your provisional license, and you have passed all those pesky CBT tests. Welcome to the big leads, kid. You're finally ready for your A2 license. With an A1 license, you were shackled to motorcycles that maxed out at 125 cc's or about like 15 horsepower or so, but an A2 license works a little differently. There's no size limit for the amount of cc's your bike has to have. You're finally free to bust dank woolies on that metallic orange turbo busa, just as long as the output doesn't exceed 47 bhp. For those who think exclusively in horsepower, bhp is brake horsepower. It's the maximum amount of power before it is delivered. bhp is a standard measurement for licensing over horsepower because all engines in inherently lose about 15% of the measured BHP when it converts to horsepower. The more you know. So my A2 guys and gals are restricted to 47 BHP when they're shopping for a new ride, and manufacturers are doing a pretty great job of engineering A2 license specific motorcycles. They're making powerful, punchy bikes that meet the legal restrictions of an A2 rider, and they're managing to keep them at pretty decent price points. Naturally, the cost for an A2 rated machine is higher than those for A1s, but they tend to hang around the A1 Aprilia and Yamaha price points, so it's not too bad. I've pulled a range of favorites though, so the bikes in today's video range from about 4,000 pounds to about 8,000. That's a big jump in price, but like you saw with the A1 bikes, there are solid, affordable options, and then there are the creme de la creme options. Before we get too far, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications. It helps us keep the channel going, helps us supply it in epic merch, and means we can give away more righteous motorcycles. Did I just time travel? Righteous? Are the kids still saying that? Do they ever say that? Remember, I may be bald, but I'm not old. I'm not that old anyway. Let's kick off with a tried and true favorite, the Honda CB300R. The baby brother of this line made an appearance in our A1 license video, so it's not surprising that Big Brother 300 is making an appearance here for A2 Brothers. All three of the bikes in this Neo Sports line look similar. The primary difference is in output, and the CB300R gives Ryder a solid 31 bhp along with the quality but affordability of Honda. And it looks pretty dang good too. Honda gets another mention with their CBR500R. The CBR500R is not a part of the Neo Sports family, it's firmly in a class of its own. Honda launched the CBR in 2014 and it was engineered to take advantage of licensing and performance regulations. Regulation 47 bhp, Honda gave the CBR500R exactly 47 bhp. The CBR comes in just shy of 6,000 pounds, and if the CBR is your speed, then you're in luck. The 500 is available in an adventure model, roadster, and cruiser, all for around the same price point. Now, the KTM RC390 has been one of my favorite bikes to kick around and have some fun on. It's incredibly lightweight and handles like an absolute razor blade with every twist of the throttle. That being said, the RC390 may not be the best option for larger riders. It's a pretty small bike, all things considered, and they have 44 horsepower for the ride. The RC390 also comes in a naked version, making it a quite palatable bike to ride around town. Whatever your flavor, replica racer or naked upright, there's a flavor out there for you. I don't typically put BMW on lists like this because they're not what I would consider an entry level bike and they are stupid expensive, both upfront and to maintain, but the BMW G310R has crept into today's video and the lovable little scamp that it is. The BMW G310R is a new addition to the market and hasn't been around for very long. BMW has already got plans to do a GS Adventure model into motion as well, but let's focus on the G310R for now. This bike has a novel reverse cylinder setup, pushes out 34 bhp, a little more than 300 cc's. It looks like an S1000R and is clearly built with novice riders in mind. The upright ergonomics mean this baby is going to be even nicer on long rides. If the price point of the BMW has a tendency to scare you a little bit, rest assured you are not alone. The G310R is an astonishing 4,500 pounds, which actually makes it one of the most affordable bikes on the list. Things I'd never thought I'd say about a BMW. What's the world coming to? Priced slightly above the BMW is the Yamaha MT-03. Like most bikes on the market, Market that are geared specifically towards A2 riders, the Yamaha MT-03 is available in a naked and fared Roadster edition. The MT-03 is a naked Roadster of the two and is easier to manage and sits more upright. So if your riding position isn't going to be aggressive and you'd like to be on a true sports bike, which makes it more comfortable for the ride, and it's a better learning curve too. It's going to set you back about 5,000 pounds and even though the styling is a bit bland, Yamaha is well known for their quality and affordability. And in the event you do need to make adjustments or repairs, parts are easy to get your hands on. My choice if you're looking at the MT-03 would be the R3, it's gonna sit probably just about as nice as the MT-03 and it looks a little bit better too. It's recently revised for this new year, it's got upside down forks, a little bit more aggressive seating position, and sportier suspension. Now, there have been a lot of new A2 bikes that have hit the market in the last year or so, so it's exciting to see the options that are available. It's also nice to see manufacturers focusing on what would otherwise be considered small bikes. 
Maybe the licensing restrictions will help kill off the whole negative ideology around small bikes and beginner bikes. What do you think about that? Is the focus around building affordable, more manageable bikes a good thing, or do you just want to see some turbo boosts already? Now, it's time to spread the good word of our favorite sponsor, Manscaped. My dudes, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know about these guys and listen and listen close. There's a reason they call me Papa Pubes, incredulous dude, clean shaved cube. They've been kind enough to sponsor today's video and they do a great job of supporting Papa Yam's degeneracy, so you know they're good people. If you don't know, staying tight and trim downstairs is preferred by eight and 10 partners. It's hygienic and it's gonna keep you looking all kinds of good when the time comes to get it up. We're talking about wheelies, not anything else, my guys. Keep your mind out of the gutter. You can pick up their perfect package, which is included in the No Nick Lawnmower 2.0 that comes with a ceramic blade by using my code YAM20 for 20% off. Now that's a hell of a deal. You'll also get free shipping on that. So check out Manscaped using the link below, use code YAM20 to get 20% off, and look as good as your Papa Yam. Well, you might not look as good as me, but you can certainly try. Now let's check out the other Yamaha you're going to want to know about from this video. An FZ07 with a restriction kit. A great option for a2 restricted squids is an FC07 with a restrictor kit. If you're an American watching this, it might sound odd to restrict the throaty bark and delightful smooth power band of an FC07's parallel twin. However, these bikes are limited to 45 horsepower. The FC07 comes equipped with 75 ponies from the factory. So, the EU has decided it'd be cool to restrict these bikes to allow newer riders to have fun with them. And I think that's a good idea. You can then de-restrict it once your A2 license is up and you now have a super fun bike to play around with. A restricted FC07 makes all kinds of sense in my opinion. Kawi dove into A2 offerings pretty hard recently with the new Kawasaki Versus X300 and the Ninja 400. The Versus is a great option for taller riders or for anyone interested in an adventure bike. The mechanics are very similar to the Ninja 300 Sportster and actually uses the same 296cc parallel twin. The entire Versus range is nice, and so it's good to see the family expand. If the sporty styling of this Honda CB500R is more your speed though, you should definitely check out the Ninja 400. The 400 is the most recent launch in a long line of improvements that started back with the 250R. It's styled to look a bit more like the Big Brother ZX6R, which is newly revised. It has that more aggressive look and styling. The Ninja 400 is a hit or miss bike in my experience. Riders either really love it and will defend it to death, or they hate it and won't spit on one if it was on fire. There doesn't seem to be an in-between. So check out one on a showroom floor or something before you commit. It could very well be the bike of your dreams, but this is is one machine you should definitely test drive before committing to. For my Ducati Biscotti brothers, I bring you the Ducati Scrambler 62. This is the second priciest option on the list, but it is a Ducati. The Scrambler line has done immensely well for Ducati, so this junior option offers a lot of the same features and nuances, with just a mind toward keeping it within the confines of A2 restrictions. The 400cc engine is half the size of Ducati's normal 800cc Scramblers, but it opens the world of Ducati up to novice riders if you're willing to drop in 7,000 pounds on one. It's not a bad buy overall, but the full-size Scrambler is only 1,000 pounds more, and there are definitely some solid options for about half of that. However, it is a Ducati, so assuming where your priorities lie, it may be the right bike for you. I have, of course, saved the best for last, the Triumph Street Triple S A2 Restricted. I've lost count of how many Triumphs I've sold for these guys, but a sponsorship has got to be coming soon, right? Just kidding, I know they'll never support your sweet papa. It's okay, guys. Maybe if we take the opposite approach and just continuously badmouth them, we'll get a response and a cease and desist we can then leverage into money. Maybe that's the right tactic here. Or we could court a manufacturer sponsorship from a true S-tier brand like Yamaha. Who knows? Even without one, I would still recommend taking a peek at the Street Triple. Just make sure you're looking at the A2 edition with the restrictor kit. It's the most expensive bike on this list at a whopping 8,000 pounds, but it is also the most substantial. The Street Triple is a big bike and even the A2 edition is going to be meatier than its counterparts, but the cool thing is when you remove that restrictor on this bike, you will have an absolute peach to cruise around on. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below about which of these A2 juicy, peachy little bikes you'd like to ride. Would it be the MT-03 or maybe you'd choose a restricted street triple? Let me know in the comments below as always. Now this video wouldn't be complete without me mentioning our Patreon. It started out as a beginner bike giveaway and we still do that. We've got the KTM RC390 up for grabs, but really it's grown to be one of the best communities for motorcyclists on the internet. Imagine a safe place where you can come learn about bikes, ask questions, see exclusive content, and hang out with me. That's what our Discord server is, the chat room that I'm on nearly every day. You can access on desktop or mobile. It's going to work just like Slack or TeamSpeak. Join over 650 members who have signed up. We've got channels specifically for new riders, bike purchases, memes, and more. Oh yeah, you get additional chances to win the bike and you're automatically entered for free. You'll get access to live streams, polls to help us decide what to do to the bikes, and more. We also do weekly $100 Revzilla gift card drawings for our members. Watch our weekly It Came From Craigslist videos to see how that works. So join us in creating the best exclusive motorcycle community on the internet. Hit the link below or go to patreon.com slash to get started. 
Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Fact. In 18th century England, gambling dens had a dedicated person whose sole job was to swallow all the dice in the establishment if there was a police raid. Goodbye.